My Rottweiler is a hellhound. I remember the day I brought Garrus home, a tiny Rottweiler pup with a tremble in his step and a whine soft as a secret. He was the last of his litter, the runt, and our connection was immediate. A bond formed in an instant, like a spark to tinder. I named him after an ancient god of old age, hoping the name would bless him with longevity. I didn't know then how ironic that wish would be. In those first weeks, Jarrus and I grew together, learning each other's ways. He was a fast learner, eager to please, responding to my commands with an enthusiasm that made training a joy rather than a chore. We'd spend hours playing in the yard, his little legs bounding after the toys I'd throw. And when he'd tire, he'd collapse into my lap, a small ball of fur, whose trust I felt in every contented sigh. As he matured into a robust and muscular Rottweiler, our bond only deepened. He was my constant companion, a shadow at my feet. His eyes, I noticed, held a peculiar glow sometimes, a deep ruby color that was striking. He never seemed to age past his prime, and that was the first oddity that truly gave me pause. The next sign came on a night choked with fog. I heard Jaras growling, a deep, guttural sound that I had never heard before. It was, it was menacing, alien. I found him at the front door, hackles raised, staring into the milky darkness. There was nothing there, or at least, nothing I could see. I chalked it up to animal instinct, perhaps a scent carried on the wind, but it happened again, and again, always on nights when the moon hung round and full in the sky. One such night, the fog became a battlefield. A skinwalker, a creature of nightmares, emerged from the mist, setting its malevolent gaze upon me. Jeras, springing into action, did not shrink back. Instead, he charged, a valiant knight in a fur cloak. The clash was violent and deadly. The skinwalker fought with the ferocity of its namesake, but it was no match for what Garrus was. When the battle was done, the sketches from the skinwalker and the growls and barks from Garrus now silenced. That's all right. There was only one noise that could be heard, other than my heart beating out of my chest. The sound of Agueras panting as he walked returned to me with that typical rotty smile, knowing he did something good, bloody but unboyed, wanting nothing more than to be by my seed. In the days following, an unsettling quiet fell over the neighborhood. The usual wild lift sounds dimmed, and the air carried attention, as if the very earth was holding its breath. It wasn't long before even more signs of strangeness began. A neighbor's hen house was found one morning reduced to ashes, the air still tasting of smoke, yet not a single feather was singed. The talk started then, a mixture of fear and wonder. They whispered of a guardian spirit a force unseen but fiercely present. But within those whispers, there was an undercurrent of respect, perhaps even gratitude. Doors remained unbarred, children played late into the dusk, and the nights were undisturbed, but for the chorus of crickets. The people of the town would never say it aloud, but there was an unspoken acknowledgement that the safety they took for granted was not entirely of their own making. In the quiet of their hearts, they knew that whatever Heras might be, he was also the one standing between them and the darker things that lurked just beyond the pale of their lantern lights. As the weeks slipped by, more incidents followed. A local farmer's prized bull was discovered standing in the middle of a charred circle of grass unharmed, but for the smell of smoke that clung to its hide. The stories grew wilder, tales spun in the glow of twilight porches. 
eyes would dart towards my home, towards Jeras, who lay at my feet, seemingly oblivious to the rumors swirling around us. It was as though the natural world reacted to his unearthly nature, his battles unseen by human eyes but felt in the tremors of the supernatural realm. The townsfolk couldn't know the truth of Geras, but they sensed it, and their whispers painted a picture of a creature of lore living amongst them. It was the disappearances that unsettled me most. Jeras would vanish without a trace, leaving no sign of exit or entry, only to reappear as mysteriously as he'd left. The house would be silent, and then I'd turn, and there he would be, as if he'd never left, watching me with those ember eyes. After the Skinwalker encounter, a chilling clarity settled over me. The world seemed sharper, fraught with unseen edges and corners that I had been blissfully ignorant of. Jairus's true nature was no longer something I could dismiss or rationalize away. It was as clear as the steadfast gaze he fixed upon me each day, a gaze that seemed to pierce through the veils of reality in the quiet moments that followed. I found myself wrestling with a mix of awe and fear. Here was Jeras, a being of legend and power, lying at my feet, his head resting comfortably over my sneakers. I began to sift through our years together, revisiting every odd occurrence through a new lens. The unexplained, the improbable, the impossible, they all now weaved into a coherent narrative with Jeras at its center. Acceptance did not come as a lightning bolt, but rather as the slow rising of the sun, illuminating the landscape bit by bit until the picture was complete. I began to see Geras not as a beast or a harbinger of doom, but as a steadfast guardian. His presence was a constant reminder that the world was much larger and stranger than I had ever imagined. And, within that vast tapestry of mystery, Jairus was my anchor, my protector. I started to walk a new path, one where fear was replaced by curiosity, and the shadows cast by the unknown were dispelled by the light of understanding. Jairus walked this path with me, his every step an assurance that no matter what lay ahead, I would not face it alone. Together we forged a new understanding, one that did not require words, for it was written in the silent language of trust and the unspoken promises between a man and his hellhound. With this acceptance came a newfound peace. The whispers and rumors of the town became like the distant roll of thunder, foreboding yet impotent. They did not understand Geras as I did, and that was both a sorrow and a relief. For in the end, it was not the world's acceptance I needed, but my own. People still whispered, of course. They spoke of the man whose dog was a spirit of legend, whose home was a bastion untouched by the town's miseries. I didn't mind. Let them talk. Let them wonder. I had Jeras, and that was enough. In the end, my wish for Jairus's longevity was granted, though not in the way I'd expected. He was timeless, a constant in a world of change, and as I grew older, I took comfort in the fact that Jairus would outlast me, that he would find a new companion to protect when I was no longer part of this earth. And when people would ask me, what is he? I'd simply say with a smile, my Rottweiler is a hellhound, and I'd ruffle Jairus's fur feeling the heat of his form under my hand. He'd look up at me, those red eyes softening, and I'd know that no matter what name the world gave him, he was my Jairus first. <laughs>